Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Grand Tactician, The Civil War. This is the Confederate Campaign, Episode 3. And we are still in the process of building an army. This is just getting started. It is only now July of 1861. We're in our third episode, and we haven't even reached the point at which, historically, the first major battle of the war took place. Uh, we have just completed Industrialization 1 as a policy which uh, is apparently not going to go away on the screen. Oh, we've got closed panel buttons now, so we don't have to right-click anymore. Must be in the latest update. Uh, so where I want to go next with policy uh, is going to be military two. Oh, it looks like we actually continue to sim while policies are up on the screen now, so that's new as well. Um, actually, you know what? I want to get the Regulars Act. That's only 20 days, and that's going to give us some additional units. Uh, that we could desperately use in our uh, military right now. Uh, I just recruited our latest patron division, which is the Lightning Division. Uh, they will eventually get up to a, a fuller strength than just 4,000 men, uh, but they're going to be the 62nd Virginia Mounted Infantry, the 64th Virginia Mounted Infantry, the 74th Virginia Mounted Infantry, and the... Um, I can't see what that is, but I think it was the 6th Virginia Horse Battery. Uh, no, it's the fourth. Okay, there I can see it. 70 days until we get them. And unfortunately, we have no... Oh, we have 12-pounder Napoleons now, finally. We didn't even have the ability to upgrade our six-pounders before. So uh, let me see where we're at on still no cavalry weapons. Hopefully, eventually, we'll get those. Remember, we're early, early, early in this game. Uh, looks like our credit rating's up to A, so that's good. Uh, but we got a long way to go before we can get some decent weapons. Uh, and, and get our military build up. You can see he's got 134,000 to our 88,000. I've renamed this army uh, the Army of the Appalachians. This used to be the Army of the Northwest. It's, it forms in West Virginia. Uh, and so these are all Virginia troops so far uh, in West Virginia troops under Fitzhugh Lee. And uh, this is, uh, Beauregard's going to command this army. And this is going to be the army that I'm going to use to kind of bounce back and forth uh, between the Eastern and Western theaters as needed. Because uh, I can see that happening, and I don't want to be having to shift core from my main army. So I'm going to use this army as kind of the bridge between these two theaters. So they're going to operate right in the Appalachian Mountains there. But as I mentioned in the last episode, my big concern right now is the, uh, the convergence of two major armies on Tennessee and he's already ta taken Chattanooga so what we're gonna have to do is I think we're gonna have to form another uh, new army and we're gonna have to form that down in uh, I'm gonna form it in Georgia uh, down probably in Atlanta and we're gonna have to march them up out of there to try and stop this from going any further so we don't have a lot of volunteers available. We've got Mississippi and Missouri's got a decent amount, but that's about it, really. Louisiana, too. Um, we've got a lot of brigades that we still need to get into service for our patrons, too. So um, who can we get to be a decent commander out of Georgia? Boy, not a lot of great choices. John C. Breckinridge, uh, former vice president of the United States. Uh, and I believe he's a cousin to uh, Mary Todd Lincoln as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and form a couple of divisions that we'll get going there. Uh, we'll start populating that with some of our patron uh, brigades and then we'll have to start supplying them because you can see I already I formed them and they're already uh, giving me a warning about supplies. All right, out west we are in the process of upgrading the Springfield Depot to a level three. That's gonna be a good base for us uh, to operate in southern uh, southwestern Missouri. Uh, and take on the Department of the West, where we have pretty even numbers at the moment. Uh, we still have this unit that I chose to flee with uh, from that force, and they're retreating all the heck the way down to Mobile, Alabama, which does not help me in the slightest. I'm moving this uh, Army of Georgia up to Atlanta. They're only going to have 6,000 men for now. Eventually, we'll get some more going in there. Uh, but right now we just don't have the manpower. Uh, Danish Legion's about to arrive. The Deseret Volunteers, our Mormon traitors, uh, are uh, uh, going to arrive in 18 days. And then we've got the New York Copperheads over here 17 days away. Those will be the first three units to make up that army. Army of Tennessee looks like they pretty much have all of their men. We don't have a lot in the way of supply up here, but we're working on that. 
it looks like the Union has kind of stabilized a little bit on their recruitment. So uh, I've got to watch my my fun situation though because my current ratings uh, BBB if it drops any lower we won't be able to recruit new units let's look at the situation in the east right now now uh, we've got the army of northeastern Virginia 22,000 strong in Washington we've got the Department of Pennsylvania uh, nearly 20,000 strong in Winchester and there is an army of the Potomac in Grafton West Virginia 27,000 strong uh, Army of the Appalachians is the closest one to them, but uh, not in a position to do much of anything. And it looks like they're already falling back from the Army of the Potomac without having even had the chance to engage. So I think we're going to probably have to do something here, but I'm just not in the place where any of my armies can do that right now. Uh, let's pause for a second and look at the situation out west because that Western Army did just move into position. We're gonna hold them tight until we figure out where his Department of the West is and how many men they're made up of. I think we've got enough to supply them at the moment. Let's take a look. Uh, supply Depot 2 can supply 19,000 men and we have uh, 13,800, so we're good there. Okay, I'm going to see if I can at least get Beauregard moved up to Charleston. We need to hold one of those three cities, Grafton, Wheeling, and Charleston. If they take all three of them, then West Virginia secedes. And we don't want that to happen. So we've got to at least hold on to one of these three. And I also, I want to hold these salt works if I can. All right, I think we just got regulars, we did. So let's go now and look at so military two will give us core organization I don't think that's what I need militia act three takes 35 days but that would get me a bunch of new recruits industrialization two what I really need right now are um, well probably what I need is something financial like printing notes uh, but what I need is something that's gonna allow me to import new weapons like diplomacy that allows uh, the Enfield Muscatoons. I don't think that helps a lot. Civilian warships is 20 days. Um, uh, yeah, we're going to print notes for now because we're going to need to keep our finances in some kind of working order. Let's take a look at the new troops we just got and where we... I don't even know where I got them. They may have formed as a, as a new force because I don't see them anywhere else or maybe they just haven't appeared yet yeah there they just appeared they appeared in Richmond so that they're gonna show up as the Army of Virginia they're gonna be 9,000 strong that'll actually be really helpful uh, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take those oh man it's gonna take a month and a half for us to even get most of them so it doesn't do us any good to even try to transfer them anywhere right now. We're just going to hold them tight for now. Uh, but what I think I will do is I'm going to transfer these men from Hampton's division uh, into the Army of Georgia. So that's Early's Brigade. That's the Peninsula Cavalry. These are all Virginia units, so I might be better off to maybe have kept them in Lee's army. But we'll go ahead and do that for now. we got to get, get them out there. You didn't really historically see a lot of Virginia units fighting in the West. They almost all fought in Virginia. There were a few. We're going to do some additional transferring real quick. Um, I think, let's see. Where's the army of the Appalachians? Uh, let's go ahead and send the Florida militia up there for now. We actually probably need to create another division there. That'll get some additional troops. Eventually, we're going to fill out some men in Sweet's Army of the Florida Georgia Line because we're going to need them uh, to protect our southern coast, especially if the Union goes after New Orleans. But for now, we'll do that. All right, Department of the Ohio, we do have a, a fresh spotting of them as of August 4th. 21,000 strong. I am tempted especially since I don't know where the Army of Indiana is, except that he's probably building up his supply base there. Uh, I'm tempted to send Albert Sidney Johnston down to hit that army. 
And we might go ahead and say, uh, take Breckenridge up and do the same. This might be an opportunity here. Oh, he came at me. Oh, hello. He was coming up toward Nashville. All right. Union passes the Tariff Act in the meantime. But he's coming up toward Nashville, which actually means we're going to have a battle here. Maybe. He actually might pull back. But in the meantime, that gives us a chance to sneak up and try to grab Chattanooga and cut off his supply base. Oh, now he's not there. He slipped away. Okay. All right, we just got to keep an eye on the Army of Indiana here. All right, we'll keep sending the Army to Georgia North. We're gonna we're gonna nail this Department of the Ohio and cut them off from supply. And this may get fought on the Chattanooga battlefield, which is one of my favorite maps on this game. Let's keep pushing. Even if it means risking Nashville, I'm going to put the squeeze on Chattanooga here. we got 6,000 men in Breckenridge's army now. What's the overall situation? 149 to 122. That's really not bad, considering. Alright, he's back in Chattanooga. Let's hit him. Hopefully the Army of Georgia gets close enough that they can reinforce. I might have wanted to move them a little faster. I don't want them to be just out of range and not be able to re reinforce that army. It's going to be super close. Is he leaving? He's slipping away. He's not going to fight. We're going to take Chattanooga back though. And as soon as we do, we're going to hold the Army of Georgia there. Oh, he's, now he's heading up toward Nashville. Look at that. Colonel Loring was exchanged. He was the guy that was captured earlier. So now the Army of Georgia can take and hold Chattanooga while we send the Army of Tennessee back up. So that worked out nicely. We're going to drive them out because that was concerning to me. Okay, the Army of Georgia is in the process of recapturing Chattanooga. It's taking a little bit of time. Confederacy is printing new notes. That should hopefully keep our credit rate rating doing okay for a while. Uh, where do we want to go next? Industrialization 2. Um, yeah, I don't think that's what we necessarily need right now. King Cotton would allow cotton-clad ram ships. It would give us a plus 5 to relations with Europe. Uh, I feel like Diplomacy 2 is the way to go right now. Let's look at finances for a second. Recruitment's still very high. I'm gonna slow that down for now. Because we're keeping up with the Union okay at the moment. I am gonna ramp up industry as best I can. And diplomacy. Both of those should help with the availability of weapons. All right, looking out here in the West, his department of the West is in some hurting right now because they're out of supply so if I hit him from my base of being in full supply this may be an opportunity here so let's go ahead and send Edmund Kirby Smith out to hit these guys while they're in a difficult situation all right we've got a slight advantage in numbers oh and actually we don't because our available manpower is less than what we actually have Okay, so we uh, are in position on the... This is the Wilson's Creek Battlefield, first of all, which is pretty cool. We haven't seen this one often, uh, where we have to attack. He holds these objectives right here, which is what we need to take. I do not want to be attacking him anywhere along this river where I expect he'll be strong. I'm going to come around, cross Wilson's Creek down here, move up this way. I'm not going to hit him on day one. It's already 530, so if I can at least get on the other side of the river and start to get close, get a good night's sleep, and then attack him from the rear the next day. That's my ideal plan. We'll see if we get away with it. We're going to send the cavalry, uh, the Yuma Mounted Raiders, up ahead of everybody else. So let's send them first. Let's give them an evade order just in case. That way if they do run into the enemy, they won't immediately engage. We're going to send him all the way across up to here to the wire road. 
and then once he gets moving, we'll start sending Hood's division, the Western Legion, and then the rest of the troops behind them. We also have uh, another cavalry unit, the Rangers Volunteers. We're going to send them up here right along Terrell Creek just to watch this road here. This is actually a really nice defensive position for him up on this hill. So we really don't want to get caught somewhere in there where we have to attack in that spot. I don't know why the Yuma Mounted Raiders aren't moving. But let's give them those orders again. And then we've given Hood orders. Or at least I thought I gave Hood orders. To move right up to here. Let's go ahead and try that again. Looks like my orders needed to be issued twice for some reason. Okay, so we're starting to get our first glimpse of the enemy, even though it's almost 8 o'clock in the evening. Uh, there is a division right here. I'm putting my two cavalry brigades at the two places where the roads cross Terrell Creek. We're going to bring our infantry divisions, uh, our two divisions, along this road for now, with the idea of eventually moving them up uh, to those locations where the two cavalry brigades are. But we're not going to do that quite yet because we're trying to get a glimpse of where the enemy is and I want to get a good night's rest because these units are going to be exhausted from all this marching. And I really don't want to have to attack with them after all that. But he may force my hand. We'll see. This is not a bad place to put an army if he were to get aggressive and come after me. In fact, he's got me thinking a little bit that we might do just that. All right, Hood. I'm going to bring Hood's division right up to here just to see what he does. We'll send Pond up this way. I don't know that we're going to get that far just because I think we're going to run out of time here in a minute for the day. But hopefully we're close enough to where we can redeploy along this ridge. We'll see here in a second. Yeah, it's going to let us redeploy pretty close. Good enough. No, I don't want Kirby Smith's whole army there. So let me get... That's not going to let me change Pond's formation. That's kind of weird. Okay, Yuma Mounted Raiders, we'll put them right out there. Actually, are they a part of, they're a part of Hood's division. So let's keep them together with Hood right here. And then we'll put the Rangers Volunteers up there. That's how we're going to do this. I want to bring my army commander up as quickly as I can so he's more centrally located. Okay, I think he's right in here somewhere. I'm sending the Yuma Mounted Raiders up about as far as here. I'm going to do the same with the Rangers Volunteers over here. And then the plan is we're going to move in with the infantry and have them set up right in behind this fence that's kind of on the hill the El Paso heavy artillery which right now are not very heavy they're only six pounders hopefully we can get them some decent guns pretty soon let's start moving them across once Whitfield moves we'll start moving Pond's division for now I'm going to bring him up right up to the creek but no further than that And then let's keep moving our army commander so he stays central to all of this. All right, here they are. Ideally, I'd like Hood's army to be, or Hood's division to stay right here. And I'd like to come up here on the flank. The numbers should be pretty even. Let's see. Yeah, they're pretty even in terms of guns and also in terms of manpower. A lot of mine's cavalry, whereas his is all infantry. Okay, so as Hood moves into position, he's moving his whole force down on me. Uh, so we're going to have to bring Pond up. I'm a little bit concerned about them having to march up this hill. But let's get them up there. Keep them even, best I can. And then Whitfield will just bring straight across, and then we'll dismount them. We've got Cooper dismounted here. We'll get these guns right here where they've got a spot to open, to have open a field of fire. 
Tucson Rangers. Let's give them a long range order. They've got Enfields. Same with the Santa Fe Irregulars. Now let's see what happens. All right, our guns have opened up. He's he's pulling back. That's actually kind. Of, I think maybe a smart move. Um, he's holding one brigade on the line here, uh, but it's going to take a while for me to get Pond's men up here. But I think since he's pulling back, we can go ahead. Oh, that one brigade's up there because he's in a feud situation. So he's like, he's pulling a Dan Sickles. He's like, I ain't holding the line with everybody else. I'm going up here because I like it here. So again, I'm going to I'm gonna be cautious here, even though uh, we're in a difficult situation because he's accumulating victory points and he's got the morale advantage. So we've got to be cautious, but we also have to keep advancing. So these guys have mixed cavalry weapons, so they don't necessarily have the best weapons for fighting. And he's got 2,500 men in cover. So we're probably better off not to advance on them until we have to. Let's let the guns just keep firing. They're only six pounders though, so they're probably not going to do a whole lot. I'm just wondering if I advance the Yuma Mounted Raiders down here. Samuel Cooper, who was, by the way, the highest ranking officer in the Confederate Army. He was the first man to be made a four star in the Confederate Army. I wonder if we could move both of them up on these guys and drive them back. I'm just afraid he'll advance out if I do that. I'm probably better off to just let Pawn's division come up and take care of business with this guy. What's happening? Uh, the guns are doing about equal damage on each side right now. All right, let's get our general moved up. How are these guys doing? They've got to be tired. They are. Because they're, they're going down the hill and then back up the hill on the other side. And let's tell Willamette Guard to do long range. Same with McCulloch's Brigade. These guys have muskets. Whereas the Willamette Guard... Um, there's a feud situation there too. Um, they have rifled guns. So we've got muskets, muskets, and rifles. All right, so the Willamette Guard now is showing as rested. Thought I gave them long range orders, I guess not. So I'm gonna actually, I think what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna move the Arkansas State Troops over to this side. I'm gonna bring the Willamette Guard up here to this side. Uh, and then we're gonna bring the Rangers Volunteers down. We're gonna engage this single brigade that's going rogue. See, we're taking 53 losses, the Yuma, um, these guys have. Uh, let's lay them down. There's really no reason for us to stand up in this field and take casualties from his artillery unnecessarily. So we get all of them laying down so as to reduce the casualties a little bit. All right, Willamette Guard, a little more rested. As soon as I can get them in range on the second brigade, I'd like to get these guns up here too, but that's taking forever. Okay, let's advance them. And then let's advance. These are mixed cav weapons, so they've got to get in super close to actually be able to fire. All right, well, that guard's going to be able to open up from right there. I'm actually probably better off if I would have held him back, because I don't know what his range is. He does not appear to be firing back, though. So that's kind of ideal. He does have cover. get these additional 2400 guns firing on these guys they're only going to take so much of that they've already taken 82 casualties in fact I'm going to bring them right up to get their own cover let's keep an eye on 
the rest of his brigades and what they're doing. See, Cooper's not taking as many casualties now that I had him laying down. All right, here comes the order. We put six volleys into him already. Hundred and fifty one casualties. That's it, move forward. Awesome. He's just sitting there, taking it. I love it. Now he's gonna open up on the Rangers volunteers, but that's also an additional twenty five hundred men we're firing on him with. So now let's go ahead and move the Willamette guard up to give them that cover as well. Alright, he's gonna send skirmishers up now. To engage us further. And I'm going to go ahead and bring up the rest of this division to that line. Hopefully, we can get these guns up here and start firing. No way the second brigade holds for too long against this. Alright, Whitfield's stable so far. Let's look at this from the other angle. That way I can see what the rest of his brigades are doing. Alright, we're good. 73 casualties, we're stable. This is first combat for, for these guys, the Rangers Volunteers. Willamette Guard. Handling themselves well. They've been in combat before, I believe. Oh yeah, this is beautiful now. Um... Now you can see the numbers have gone up significantly for him. Just got to keep an eye on their morale, which is now nervous. That's a bit of a concern. These poor guns, they're just having a heck of a time getting up this hill. Now it's 600 against 277. I don't want to move, I don't want to advance yet. I want to drive off this brigade first. But I think we're at the place now where we can do this. Oh, no, 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 no. Ah. All right, that's okay. We can still do this this way. All right, let's try to get Whitfield to rally the Rangers volunteers. That was their first combat. They they were doing okay. They only lost 155 men, and they only had one part of uh, that resi resilience number. If we can get McIntosh up here, we can fire on his flank. Still drive him off. He lost a third of his men. Well, about a fourth. It's funny how early in the war like this, you know, we're talking about single brigade actions, but eventually we're going to be dealing with multiple corps on the field, hundreds of thousands of men. All right, McCulloch. Well, it's McIntosh now. It's McCulloch's brigade. Let's pour it into him, boys. Oh, we're not able to fire from there? Oh, boy. Come on. Now we just got to watch, because he may move on me here. All right, there he goes. All right, can we capture these guys? I bet we can. No, no, stay away. This is where having the cavalry there might have come in handy. Because we really could have hit him with the calf. Alright, they're getting driven off, but I don't like the idea that they're getting driven off in that direction. Because that could come back to, to bite us later. Alright, we're going to pull back along this line again. 
Paris's guns are finally opening up. Wouldn't mind turning them on these guys. And then we're gonna sit tight until we figure out what we want to do here, because I feel like a direct frontal assault is not a good idea, given his morale advantage on me. All right, the Rangers volunteers are back into it. They're engaging right here with some uh, skirmishers. I'm gonna move the Willamette Guard in on the left here, but they've taken 400 casualties and they're not looking real happy about it. I have no idea why the Yuma Mounted Rangers are facing the wrong direction at the moment. I'm hoping we can quickly correct that. And I'm gonna start moving hood up a little bit. We'll probably start engaging here. It's gonna be an old good old-fashioned shootout here because the numbers are pretty even on each side. I just wish Cooper had turned around and head the right direction. Well, Cooper broke. That's to be expected when a guy turns his back in the face of the enemy. Tucson Rangers are two-thirds of the way to having their first perk already. So that's nice. Willamette Guard's exhausted. But Banks sent some skirmishers forward that we ought to be able to handle pretty easily here. But I'm not liking the way this battle is going. Santa Fe regulars are also getting fire on the Missouri Brigade. We have no range whatsoever with these guys. We'll send some skirmishers out. Send McCulloch's brigade over this way. How are we doing? Santa Fe regulars are confident. DA Hills Tucson Rangers are confident. They're doing pretty well. How do the numbers look? Still in our favor. But he's got cover. I do not. Looks like these guys are recovering. Only 31 casualties. A lot more on the Santa Fe regu the regulars. That concerns me. Just not causing enough casualties quickly enough. We just don't have the range here. Let's send some skirmishers out. Alright, it's so 1100 to 1500. The concern is the morale. His morale is way higher than mine. He's got the objectives that I don't have. I thought for sure this was going to be a good battle for me. I didn't expect his morale to be that high. At all. Will 
one mech guard moved up. Can these guys recover yet? They're panicked. So I would say no. Send out some skirmishers. Chill skirmishers haven't lost a man. That's crazy. Bottom skirmishers are about to break. He inflicted almost 10% casualties. I just don't see any of his men, any of his brigades breaking. He's just too strong all the way along the line. Cover. Alright, there go those skirmishers. Damn, I just don't see it. I don't see where I can win this battle. Unless I can manage somehow to turn banks. But I don't see the will in that guard strong enough to do that. Yeah, I'm not sure this is happening. He was just in too good of a position. We send the Tucson Rangers over to maybe help these guys out. Let's see if that helps. Colors Brigade not doing too great either. Yeah, the casualties are just staying too even. I need these guys up here firing on this brigade. Come on, get up there. long range. Start firing on them. There we go. That gets us a second brigade firing on that brigade. Who's getting low on ammo? Stafford. Man, this is a hot battle. Willamette guard that's low on ammo. No, you gotta go long range. I don't care how low you are on ammo. You got 41 rounds. What are you talking about? Oh, Stafford's detachment that was low. All your skirmishers back in. Alright, let's get these guys up. Keep the fire up. Santa Fe regular is about to get their perk. Man, this is crazy. His morale is still so much higher than mine, though. Why is my army commander back so far? Let's move him up. Maybe that'll offer some morale support to be in range. Ah, uh, McCulloch's about to break. He's not gonna last. Which is too bad because he's got support now. Oh, who was wounded? Whitfield, commander of the Rangers Volunteers. That's over here. Man, this is one of the the longest battles I've ever seen on this game where you've got two entire lines firing on each other without significant breaks on the line. But I speak too soon because there goes McCulloch, broken. Still, we've inflicted greater casualties. It's just not enough. 
when you figure his objective points and his overall morale situation. Oh, his second brigade left the battlefield. That puts him down to just 15,000 men. guys up a little further. Actually, I want them to dismount. Okay, okay. Is that another brigade breaking? It is. Alright, DHL. Tucson Rangers have just been solid, man. They've barely taken any casualties. Santa Fe regulars have a perk. They level up in ranged combat, so let's give them iron discipline. We'll bring up the Yuma Mounted ra ra uh, Raiders and see if we can get on the flanks here. We may yet do this, which is amazing to me. Why can I not get them to switch to, to long range? Need long range on that. Willamette guard hanging in there, down to 28 rounds. They're exhausted, but he's got to be exhausted too. He's lost almost 700 men. All right, let's move up to Santa Fe regulars. Tucson Rangers, are they even firing on anybody? I actually want to fire them on these batteries. Neutralize some guns. Man, this has been a fun battle. It really has. Alright, he's up to 3,500 casualties now. His morale is still way ahead of mine. Moving up. Get the Willamette Guard up this hill. That's why they're so exhausted. They're marching up this hill and firing at the same time. Right, Rangers volunteers, I want you on them. Help Willamette Guard turn this flank. We have to get these guys close to be able to fire. But you can see that that arrow is starting to move in our direction. His morale's down to the same as ours now. That's huge. Okay, banks broke. Awesome. We've broken the the units on both flanks now. Let's bring the Willamette guard down. We've broken his guns here. I think we're gonna win this. Man, those were some heavy casualties for every unit involved in this battle. All right, Cooper, chill right there, dude. Where are you going? Stop. This is at least the second time that the human mounted rangers have not done what I wanted them to do. And they're going right into it now. They're going to end up breaking again. At least mount up if you're going to do that. Come on, Cooper. We were about to win this thing, and you got to go and pull that. All right, Bonham, I need you to hold. BH Hill's about to get his perk. All right, he just broke another unit in the center now. That was Ward. Wincoop broke as well. We've got this. I think we've got this. It's 5 p.m. Ammo is certainly a factor. But with the units that have broken, that gives us advantages we didn't have before in numbers. Minor victory. We're about to win this. Yeah, we've got it. Dang, wow, what a battle.
What a battle that was. That was fun. That was fantastic. One of my favorite battles I've fought on this game. Could have gone either way. Casualties ended up more one-sided than they were. For most of that battle, they were pretty even. But they got kind of one-sided in his retreat at the end. All right. Narrow victory at Springfield. Here's the situation. We're going to stop right here. It's a little shorter episode today, but I'm on my way uh, on a trip this week out to Kansas. Uh, and so don't have as much time to squeeze in a, a pre-recorded episode to get live. But um, national morale for the Union, 80. National support, 91. Morale, the armies is low right now. Uh, 157,000 men fielded to 130,000. But when he passes the draft, that number is going to go up by hundreds of thousands. And so we have to be prepared for that uh, on our side. Um, European relations, you can see where they're at right now. Total casualties about 2 to 1. That's pretty typical um, in uh, other campaigns that I've fought. Uh, but we're going to stop right there. We've got to deal with the blockades for sure. Uh, we definitely have to keep an eye on... Uh, our finances and we have to keep an eye on the recruitment situation at some point we're going to have to be ready to pass the Conscri conscription act which means that as soon as uh, we are done with our current policy which is diplomacy 2 i think we're probably going to have to go after military 2 which is going to take a while but that'll open up the conscription act for us uh, with another 30 days uh, recruitment bounties would be nice down the road eventually i would very much I like to get to the place where I can um, do the Slavery Restriction Act. Uh, that'll give me a 20 point bonus to European relations, which would be huge. But we're going to need Industrialization 3 to do that. So long way in the, in the distance thinking about those things. But let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below. And we'll see you again soon with another episode. Thanks for watching.